Hi, this is Phil Needham. It's the 28th of March, 2022, and we're in the field of winter wheat. It got down to about 26 Fahrenheit this morning. Yesterday was more of a concern because it got a little colder. This field was below 27 for over three hours and below 26 for about one hour. We had a thermometer and data logger out in the lower areas of this field. And you can see in this field, there's lower areas where there's more frost. You can see that. So elevation has an impact on spring freeze damage. So what exactly is spring freeze damage? So let's reference this document from Kansas uh, State University. You can Google it, it's called spring freeze injury. And it shows a chart, as you can see here, that shows wheat resistance to freeze injury by growth stage. And it suggests here, the growth stage at jointing stage, it says approximate injurious temperature for two hours is 24 Fahrenheit. And it says death, the growing point, leaf yellowing or burning, lesions, splitting or bending of lower stems, odor, yield effect moderate to severe. So based on my experience over the past 32 years in Kentucky, we've had six spring freeze events of which all of those have had an impact on wheat yields, which have gone from significant impact, major yield losses, to not much injury at all. Sometimes we see stem damage, which influences lodging, which has an indirect uh, effect on yield. But the most important thing is its temperature, its duration of temperature, and its growth stage. We know those facts, okay? So if you use a sharp knife and you cut the plants level by the soil surface and you see hollow stems like i'm showing here then that tells you the stems with a hollow stem have jointed meaning the head is above the soil surface so again using a sharp knife you'll carefully cut the stem open and look for the primordial grain head okay the grain head is right here and it is in this example about one and a half inches above the ground Again, once that grain head appears above the soil surface, then it's going to be sensitive to a spring freeze. So it's about temperature, as we've said, it's about duration of temperature. It's about growth stage. And these growth stages indicate the sensitive temperatures. There are some things that we don't understand, one of which is humidity. We've been logging temperatures yesterday and this morning. We've been logging relative humidity uh, because we don't know the impact of humidity. But where I'm going is over the past few years, we've had some wheat that was at a sensitive stage to freeze injury. The temperatures were cooler than this chart suggests for a time period which extends beyond what they suggest to be the injurious temperatures. And we see little to no damage at all, which is puzzling. So there's some factors within this document which don't appear to hold true. And we don't fully understand these, but I'm gonna give you a couple that I've seen that may be a factor. Number one, look at the cloud cover. Sometimes this morning's an example when it freezes, but it's cloudy. In these examples, I believe that the temperatures warm up much slower when it's cloudy and the cells don't rupture. They, you don't get the freeze damage when it warms up slower. The second factor is what I call soil temperature buffering. Meaning if you had some warm temperatures, especially in work ground, this is no-till into cornstalks. We've learned how to no-till wheat into cornstalks very successfully by selecting varieties and controlling fusarium with good fungicides. But in no-till, the soils are cooler in the spring You've got less radiant air energy, less temperature radiating up from the soil surface, less of an effect of protecting the grain heads. If it's work ground, you get a little bit more temperatures radiating up out of the soil, especially if it's been warmer before the spring freeze. Lastly, certainly not least, there's some degree of protection that we can present to a wheat crop by planting fuller season varieties first, earlier varieties last. We've been recommending that for 30 years or more. Everybody needs to be planting early, medium, 
and late maturity varieties to spread their harvest workload and their disease pressure. But if you plant your fuller season varieties first, they join later. It gives you some protection against spring freeze, planting your earlier maturity varieties last. So that's what we know and perhaps what we don't know about spring freeze injury. You need to record temperatures and look after your wheat. Thanks for watching.